Hey, what up, players? We're about to take back up in this mug. It is Lord of the Rings Day, I guess, over at the studio. I am showing off these three hero models for the Lord of the Rings range from Games Workshop. They're all in metal, and starting from the left, you've got Gandalf the White. In the center, you've got Aylmer, played by Carl Urban in the films. I finally figured out who that model was, and the reason... I was able to find it is because I just kept Googling and looking up models and um, finding, not really finding, not really finding anything. And then this um, one of my subscribers and actually a potential client of mine sent me a link to this huge, comprehensive, totally fleshed out catalog of every Games Workshop Lord of the Rings model ever released from the old Lord of the Rings games to the Hobbit releases. It's got everything in it and uh, it is amazing. And um, this guy wasn't the one who made it, but he found it, I think on, was it Bolter and Chainsword or uh, w one of those forums, but he was nice enough to reach out to the guy and ask if I could reference him and use that link and uh, I guess kind of promote it. And so he got back to him and it got back to me that I can, so I'm including it in the description below. I think it's super helpful. If you are interested in Lord of the Rings models, there is a picture of each model, what the model's name was, and um, hopefully, hopefully you can find what you want on eBay because Games Workshop doesn't really support all of the old models. You, you can find some of them, but um, yeah, good luck fi finding, finding the ones you want. So yeah, I found out that this is Aylmer and I'm, I'm really glad I was able to. On the end, you've got Eowyn from the uh, Kingdom of Rohan. The two of them are both from the Kingdom of Rohan. So uh, I remember from Two Towers and Return of the King, their armor is very specifically this dark red-brown, and I wanted to recreate that look for these models. I, I think anyone who paints Lord of the Rings models, if you really want to get get a uh, precise and get the accurate I guess uh, interpretation of them you want to go by what the actors look like in the film so when I was doing my research for these guys I actually just googled the character and then I typed in movie and you can find a lot of great shots of the actors in costume that are used as uh, reference shots for the costume designer the director and um, you know, the entire production team. So it's great for painters as well because you can really identify the colors. It's not like they were taken right out of the movie and they look all grainy. These actually are some great shots that I was able to find. So um, to get the red armor, that leather, red leather, I got uh, started with a Doom Bull Brown based coat. Base coat? I shaded with Agrax Earthshade, brought it back up with Doom Bull Brown, and then highlighted by adding just a little bit of, I think it was Carrick Stone to kind of uh, lighten the tone without, without I guess, washing it out and making it too, too light. The skin tone for Aowen is a little bit different. Usually my skin tone, like for Gandalf, for these Lord of the Rings models is Bugman's Glow. Add in a little bit of Cadian Flesh Tone, shade with Raikland Flesh Shade, and highlight with uh, Cadian Flesh Tone again. For Eowyn, I wanted to make her a little bit more fair because she is a girl. She is uh, supposed to be more of a focal, like, um, very attractive. The focal point is her face. And with these models, because they're sculpted a little bit smaller than your typical Games Workshop Space Marine. Oh, we'll put a Captain in Blood Angels Terminator armor there. They have a little bit less surface area to work with for their, their facial features and stuff. So I wanted to make sure, because her only sp spot of flesh on the model is her face, I wanted to make sure that I did her up real nice. And I achieved that by starting with Rackarth Flesh as a base coat, and then shading with two applications of Raikland Flesh Shade, the first all over the face, and the second targeting right under her cheekbones and under her chin. And believe me, gentlemen out there, if you have a lady in your life, special lady who likes to put on makeup and uh, knows how to target those shadows and highlights, it's a big help because my lady boss looked at it the first time and she said, that looks like a monster, that looks like a river troll, you have to do this to shade her face and you, what are you doing? You have to bring out these tones in her cheeks and whoo! It's a great, great help having a lady in your life. 
Speaking of cheeks, added in a little bit of, uh, I think it was Dumbo Brown as like a rouge color, but not too much. And then just, just like a little touch to create a little rosiness in her cheeks. You use straight Dumbo Brown, just thin down a little bit to do the lipstick. And the eyes were shadowed with Sotek Green. Why don't we get a little bit closer just because I'm talking about her. To do a bit of an eyeshadow effect. So let's see if my camera will focus. Yep, there you go. You can see she, she looks very, very fair. And uh, I just had so much fun painting her. And her eyes, I, you, you might notice that they look like just horizontal slits of black. I did do a white eyeball with a black pupil. And for all of these models, because they are sculpted in this smaller, I guess, uh, scale, Anytime you try to paint eyeballs on, there is the danger of them looking very bug-eyed. So I didn't want my models to look bug-eyed. So I, uh, more often than not, played it safe and just painted in the eye sockets with a nice black. So here's Gandalf the White. Sorry, sorry for the blurriness. So you can see if his the model, Ian McClellan, Squinty eyes in McClellan with those huge bags under his eyes. If I had tried to paint in the whites of his eyeballs, I probably would have a very weird, creepy looking Gandalf. So, as you can see, he looks just like Ian McClellan, I think. The sculpt is, the sculpt is really, really good. And I think doing a minimal, I guess, application of skin tones and sticking with that shocking white hair and beard for this model really gives you, I think, a look that you will be happy with. Speaking of Gandalf, the white, I achieved this look for his robes by doing the outer cloth here in deck tan from Vallejo. From the back, you can really see it's a very light bone color and it contrasts really nice with the shocking pure white which is Vallejo's white, that's what I used, of the hair and the staff. So his little poncho there is also a nice contrast to the robes he has underneath, which are Vallejo's white, shaded with known oil, and then painted back up because um, we want to have a nice balance of that rich, warm ivory color of his outer cloak, and then his white robes, white hair, white beard, white eyebrows, and white staff. So, all right, we're running on eight minutes. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I am really, really hoping to be able to get back to doing full-fledged tutorials soon so I can show you how I paint these models. But um, I want to thank you for watching. If you'd like to support my studio, you can always hook up a commission with me. You can send me an email at warbosstastudios at gmail.com. Or if you want to donate to my studio and get some pretty cool nifty rewards, check out my Patreon page, which I plug in every video because um, I, I think it's a great way to uh, leave a tip to artists that you like. So thank you for watching, everybody, and I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope those of you who've never painted Lord of the Rings before, but you might be interested in it, I hope this kind of gives you an idea that uh, they're not all just uh, horribly plain and ugly and not bulky and beefy like the Warhammer and 40K stuff. They are really beautiful models. They're like art pieces, I think, and uh, more so than any of other games' workshop ranges. So thanks for watching. See you in the next video.